Hey, my name is Michael Lin, and I'm part of the MongoDB Developer Advocacy Team. And today we're going to talk about building a Slack app leveraging MongoDB Stitch. And we're going to do that in about 10 minutes. There are some requirements for what we're going to do today. First, you're going to need administrative access to a Slack workspace. We're going to add an app to a workspace, so you'll need to have administrative access. And uh, to get that started, you can head on over to slack.com slash get dash started. You're also going to need a MongoDB Atlas account. You can get started for free. Head on over to cloud.mongodb.com to get that started. We're going to create a cluster. We're going to create a database and a collection in that cluster. And what we're going to do today, you can do right from the free tier, the M0 sized instance in MongoDB Atlas. Next, we're going to create a Stitch app. And uh, we're going to do that in about 10 minutes or less. So I'll start with a little bit of an explanation of what Slack is and, and what Stitch is, and, and then we'll go from there. So hang on, and we'll be right back. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is Slack. So if you're not familiar with what Slack is, it's a really popular communication tool used by developer teams all around the world. Really super popular. Um, and the great thing about it is that it is extensible, so you can actually write apps and have those apps plug in. But the basic functionality is that you get these channels that you can use to communicate with the rest of your team. Uh, channels are sort of like hashtags in Twitter. Um, they're separated by topics. But you can also use uh, Slack to directly communicate with other members on your team. Direct messages can be one-to-one, uh, -one, and you can also have multiple team members in a direct message. So really powerful communication tool. Um, I'm in the MongoDB community Slack right now. This is where I'm going to be doing some testing. Um, you are welcome to join me here, and you can join the MongoDB community Slack channel by visiting launchpass.com slash mongo-db. So check that out, and uh, I hope to see you on the Slack channel. Let's get started and, uh, and get into the process of creating a Slack app with MongoDB Stitch. So to get started, we're in Slack. I'm going to click on the top level menu for my Slack workspace. And because I have administrative access, uh, I get the administration uh, menu. I'm going to click Manage Apps. And that's going to take me to a web uh, console where I can see all of the apps that have been added to my workspace previously. Now I'm going to click Build because we're going to build a new app. And then I'm going to click Your Apps. And I've already created one, but let's just go through the process. I'll click Create New App, and you can name this anything you like. Mine is called URL. I'll tell you what that's about in a second. Make sure you select the right development Slack workspace. For me, it's going to be in the MongoDB community. And then I'm going to click Create. Now, as I've said, I've already created this URL app. And my app is going to store and retrieve interesting URLs for my team. So let's say I come across an interesting URL and I want to share that with the team and have that stored in a, in a database somewhere. Well, our app is going to integrate with MongoDB Stitch and MongoDB Atlas to save URLs in a document inside a database in MongoDB uh, for retrieval later via a slash command in Slack. So how exactly does that work? Well, first, let's just create your app and put that aside for a moment. Then we're going to go over to MongoDB Atlas, and we'll show you how to get started there in just a moment. OK, here we are in MongoDB Atlas. I've registered for an account, and I've created a M0 size cluster. I've done this all for free without pulling out a credit card. Um, you can do the same to get started. Go check out the documentation at docs.mongodb.com slash atlas. Uh, once you create your cluster, you'll come in and click the collections viewer. And I'm going to create a database. I'll call my database example db. And I'll create a collection called example collection call. And click create. create. Once we've created a database and a collection. Obviously, there's no documents in there. Let's jump over to Stitch Apps. And we'll create a new one. Um, you can call this what you like. I called mine URL Stash. It's linked to a cluster. 
and you can keep the, the defaults the same. This is just the name of the stitch service and the location for the, the primary stitch uh, instance. Click create and that will give you a stitch app. I'm going to go into the one that I previously created so that we can see exactly what I've done. Here is the app ID. Um, we won't need that for the moment. Um, the thing that we're really going to be focusing on for our Slack app is services. So we're going to create a service that will help us integrate with Slack between Slack and MongoDB Stitch. So I've created one here called Slack and this is an HTTP service and services have incoming webhooks. So I've created one of those and the really at the heart of a an HTTP service in Stitch is the function that gets executed. Well, when does that function get executed? It gets executed when an external service calls the URI. So this is the publicly addressable internet uh, address of the, the webhook, of the incoming webhook. So it's webhooks.mongodb-stitch.com, API, client, v2, and this is the name of your Stitch app. We created a service, we called it Slack, we created an incoming webhook, and we called that incoming webhook incoming. So this is the URI that you're going to need to plug into your Slack app to enable it to talk to your Stitch app and send commands that people type inside Slack. So keep that on the side, maybe copy that and keep it in your paste buffer. Now what happens is when your users, when you plug that into your Slack app, um, <clears throat> the payload from Slack is going to be sent to this JavaScript function for your service and it's going to execute this. So here is the payload that is sent from Slack. So the first thing I want to do when this, this service webhook, this incoming webhook gets called, is I want to establish a connection to the database. And I'm going to do that inside Stitch, leveraging a context object. This is a free object that Stitch provides for you. There are several sub-objects off of that main context object. This one that we're going to use here is called, uh, it's a service, and it's called MongoDB-Atlas. This is how we gain access to the MongoDB databases in Atlas from a Stitch app. I'm going to create a, a handle um, which references my MongoDB service and the example DB database that I just created. Another variable will point to my collection. And from there, I'm going to evaluate what's been sent to this uh, Stitch uh, service via the Slack app and it's coming across in a payload with a query object. Now this is specified by Slack. So Slack is sending us a payload with a query object, several fields in that object. One of them is called text. That is the text of the command that users type when they use a slash command from Slack. So we're gonna split on that and create an array. And just for our own purposes, we're going we're gonna to give users the ability to do, well, three things here. We're going to give them the ability to stash URLs and store them in the database, list out the previously stashed URLs, and remove URLs that have been stashed previously. Now, in here, this is all standard Node.js JavaScript. Uh, we're leveraging the collection pointer that we created previously, and we're using a method off of that called insert one. This is where we're inserting a document into our database based on what the user typed from the slash command. So this is the magic, this is what happens. This will be available for you to review in the GitHub repository. I'll make sure you have the, the URL to the GitHub repo um, shortly. So now we've created a service, we've created a function that executes now we've grabbed the webhook URI. Now what do we do with that? How do we go back and tell Slack about this Stitch app so that when people use a slash command, they're sending it to Stitch? Well, we do that from our Slack instance. We go and we go to administration and we manage apps. It's gonna bring us to the app console. Now we went through and created this previously um, I can look at my apps that I've created previously by clicking your apps. 
here I created the URL app and here is where you specify slash commands so I've created one previously but we can create a new one and we can call this one URL2 and here's where you provide the webhook URI that we grabbed from Stitch got that in my paste buffer I can give users a short description And it's just as easy as that. So we're going to save that. We'll have two slash commands that we can use. Once you do that, you're going to go back to basic information and you're going to install this into your workspace. I've already done that, so I'm not going to go through it again. But from there, we should be able to go to our Slack instance and type slash URL. You'll see the two that I created. Let's use the original one. And remember, when I type this command, I'm going to send this Slack command to, to Slack, then it's going to be sent to Stitch behind the scenes. So slash URL, and I'm going to stash a new one. So it tells me that it's stashed that. Let's list out the ones that have been stored previously. And it looks like that's the only one. And then our last command that we created is slash URL remove. And we'll provide the URL that we want to remove. Delete it. So let's do it one more time, slash URL list. Looks like there's none there. So that's the basics of creating a very simple Slack command, a Slack slash command with MongoDB Stitch. I hope this was helpful for you. Good luck in getting started. Have a great day.